Welcome to the Keeping It Israel podcast today. We are, um, like you, uh, shocked, alarmed, and horrified at what has been happening in the land of Israel in the last few days. I can't begin to uh, tell you how uh, emotional this has been for us, but as, as shocking and emotional and traumatic uh, as it's been for us, we know from firsthand uh, accounts that it is so much more difficult for people who are on the ground in Israel. We are currently in Canada right now, uh, but have been receiving reports on an almost uh, hourly basis from various friends and ministry leaders throughout the nation of Israel. And we just want you to know, first of all, that they are safe. Those who that we've heard from, we've not heard of any of our partners who are directly in harm's way, although uh, we do want you to pray. And, and we're going to talk a little bit on this podcast about uh, how you can pray, what are some practical ways that you can pray and things that you can be praying about as this conflict ensues. But we do want you to know so you can pray that uh, many of our friends in Israel have sons and daughters who are currently active in duty with the Israeli Defense Forces. And uh, also some of them themselves, the ministry leaders, are being called up as reservists in this uh, 300,000 uh, people draft that uh, Israel has just put out. They've, they've called back 300,000 reservists, and that means that many of the people we know will also be called up to, uh, to active duty. Um, uh, one friend of ours, um, uh, Nadi from Tel Aviv, has already been called up. Uh, he pastors there in the congregation. And so we just want you to be praying for uh, so many that are uh, involved with this. And I also want to say, you know, we're going to talk about uh, prayer in a moment, but um, we, we, we condemn this violence in the strongest way. And uh, this is not a political statement. This is a statement about humanity. It's a statement about common decency. And we are uh, condemning these violent terrorist acts. And we want you to know, if you're listening, if you ever wondered, we stand firmly with Israel. And we believe that Israel has the right to defend herself in this situation and many other situations in the past. But in this one, it's, it's just unequivocal. There's just no, no getting around the fact that this has been a, a heinous act of crime and terror against the Israeli people, and it needs to be squashed. And so, um, listen, we want you to know, you know, we love everyone. We believe that God loves everybody. And we pray not only for innocents on the Israeli side, we pray for those who are innocent in Gaza and in the West Bank and other parts that, uh, you know, this is no, uh, no act of theirs. This is not uh, something that, uh, you know, that they would maybe even support. But we just pray also for the protection of innocents on uh, the side of Gaza. We're thankful that the Israeli army uh, has warned and informed and let people know that they'll be striking terror targets. But uh, we also know that, uh, you know, only only bad things can come from this. And so we pray for the protection of those who are innocent on both sides. But we believe that this needs to be met with this strong response that it is being met with right now. And we want uh, we want you to know that that that's where we stand. We are looking to uh, speak with a guest here in a few moments, and uh, I'm just going to continue to share with you as we wait for him to arrive. But um, listen, we can tell you this. Uh, we have been praying. We have called all of our partners to prayer. We are asking that, uh, that you just consistently intercede on Israel's behalf. Uh, over these days, because uh, it is really terrible what is uh, what is happening. And so um, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. We uh, have seen so many of you uh, reach out on social media and uh, in other ways by email. Some of you have phoned me and um, 
you know, are phoning in donations. We want you to know that we're doing our level best to get donations to Israel very timely fashion so that uh, those who are uh, collecting funds to help the victims of war can uh, begin to use those right away. It's a, it's a terrible time, a terrible time in our history. Uh, and, you know, I want to say something else. I, I want to say that um, I know lots of people are talking prophecy right now and doomsday and doom and gloom and, and all of those things. But, but I want to say this. We as believers, as people of faith, I believe need to be optimistic and believe that, uh, that Israel can get this under control without any further input from outside. Uh, one of the things we want to pray uh, against is uh, involvement from other countries because I believe that uh, that will only exacerbate things. Um, and, and this as well, anyone who uh, you know, perhaps has uh, had thoughts of being supportive of Hamas. I'm not. I'm not talking about being supportive of of people suffering in Palestine. I believe people are suffering in Palestine at the hands of their own terrorist leadership. But uh, if you're a Canadian, especially, or an American, and you're going out and being involved in a in a protest in support of Palestine in this moment, um, I think that is reprehensible. Uh, you need to wake up and see what's ex what's actually happening on the ground in the land of Israel. And if you look at this with any kind of objectivity, you're going to know that uh, this is evil incarnate and Hamas are 100% completely and totally in the wrong in this situation. I don't care what you think's happened in the past. Uh, you know, it, this is just not the way to resolve any kind of any kind of complaint or beef that that uh, the Palestinians may have had it's uh, it's inhuman and it's wrong so there I, I tried to be uh, you know as gentle as I could but uh, we have just been so fraught with with emotion uh, we, we've been heart sick heart broken at what is happening to innocent Israelis and uh, what has happened, what will happen. We are uh, just sick for the hostages. And um, man, I don't know how we can, uh, you know, talk about this in any other way, but to say, uh, dear God, help us, uh, Lord, please bring a quick resolution to this issue and to this conflict because um, nobody, nobody will win. Uh, here, there will be no, there will be no winner in the end. Uh, only a quieting of conflict and violence, and and we need that to come just as soon as possible. Um, I'm going to pause here for a moment, and uh, just while we wait for our guest, and we'll be back. Well, I am back with our guest for today. Zev Orenstein is one of the directors of the City of David in Jerusalem. However, today he's just uh, talking to us as an Israeli citizen and uh, someone who is going through what, uh, what all Israelis are going through in these moments. Zev, uh, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us today. Of course. We uh, we want to know from your perspective. I mean, you know, we've um, we've been talking to our partners, the people that follow us, and um, you know, from from a Jewish Israeli perspective, how can we best uh, stand with Israel? How can we best support Israel through what is going on in these moments? How can we pray? These are the questions that uh, that we're hoping to get your perspective on this morning. You know, I, I think that. Uh there's a biblical answer when in the book of Genesis, when, when Jacob was returning uh, back to the land of Israel after having spent a number of years uh, uh, working for, for Laban, and he's coming back with uh, then a large family. And he receives a report that uh, his brother Esau is, uh, is approaching with, with 400 men. And the last time that mm -hmm. Jacob had seen his brother, uh, they did not part on the best of uh, circumstances. Jacob had yeah. uh, managed to, uh, uh, get the uh, the birthright blessing, which Esau did not feel uh, Jacob was entitled to, and, and Esau plotted to kill his brother. And uh, 
Jacob's mother uh, said, he's got to leave town. Rebecca says, get out of here. Otherwise, your brother's going to kill you. And uh, so he leaves. Uh, and all these years later, he's coming back and his brother is coming to greet him with 400 men. And it says that Jacob takes three steps uh, to prepare for this encounter. And I think the three steps that he takes uh, are, are ones that are, are, are relevant here, at least uh, two out of three for sure. The first is prayer. Uh, mm -hmm. First is, uh, is, is prayer uh, to beseech uh, God Almighty um, to, to do his part. Uh, and hopefully uh, our prayers will be heard and uh and they'll be answered in a way that with our uh human understanding will, will be good in our eyes uh and, and make sense uh, mm -hmm. to us uh and what we understand good to be which is which is uh that israel will be able to uh destroy uh its enemies that uh, to restore peace within the land that no more killing uh should happen all the captives will be able to be returned home without the need to God forbid, release any murderers or terrorists in exchange for them. Uh, I think, uh, you know, that praying that our, our leaders have the courage to make uh, difficult decisions in, in the days, weeks, and probably months, months to come, and that mm -hmm. uh, the people also will, will be strong. I think prayer is the first one. Uh, second thing is, uh, you know, I imagine the people who are listening to this program right now, uh, they're not in Israel. They're not in the IDF. They're not going to be going into battle. Uh, but uh, there is a saying uh, that is... Uh, there are the fighters, and then there are those who support the fighters, and, and there are many causes. Uh, I don't have to get into naming them here, but, uh, but you know, I'm happy to share with you some resources that you could share uh, uh, you know, with, with your listeners about how to support uh, Israel at this time, to support you know, IDF troops, uh, making sure that they have the supplies and everything that they need at this time as, as they go into battle. Uh, and so again, you know, the people listening to this program may not themselves be going on, out to battle, but that doesn't mean you can't support those who, who are. Uh, and the third thing I would say is that this is going to be a, a protracted uh, war. And while most of the governments around the world right now are supportive of Israel, uh, that's because for the most part, Israel has not yet begun uh, serious fighting. Uh, but it will, and it will soon, and it, it will not take a few hours or, or, or days. It will take weeks and probably months. And inevitably, uh, pressure will be brought to bear against Israel to uh, you know, show restraint, uh, to kind of wrap things up militarily, to try and find a diplomatic solution, which would, of course, mean negotiating with terrorists. And uh, God willing, uh, you know, the people listening to this program, if, if they can uh, speak to their elected officials and their leaders and, and make it clear that uh, Israel should, uh, if those governments don't want to help Israel, that's one thing, but at least uh, do no harm, do not interfere. Uh, allow Israel to do what Israel needs to do. No other country in Israel's position right now uh, would accept any outside interference uh, after uh, in a single day nearly a thousand people being murdered, uh, most of them innocent civilians having over a hundred men, women, children taken captive by a terrorist group into, into Gaza. And no no, no uh, country in the world would, would tolerate calls for restraint of any kind right now. Israel needs to do what it needs to do. Uh, God willing, uh, our leaders understand that and will we'll do what is necessary. Um, God will, of course, do his part. And uh, again, mm -hmm. the people listening to this can do theirs by uh, supporting those on the front lines here and also, uh, you know, speaking to your elected officials and making sure that uh, they allow Israel to do what, what Israel needs to do. Thank you very much. I think that was extremely succinct. And, uh, you know, we are certainly encouraging our people in those in those veins. Um, if you're watching or listening right now, um, there will be opportunities. Uh, I know that um, there's a, a, a galley, a gathering, a rally in uh, in Toronto at Mel Lastman Square tonight. You may not hear this uh, podcast before this rally happens, but uh, you know, we just uh, want you where there are opportunities for you to get out and show solidarity with Israel and with the Jewish people. You need to do that. We are appalled at the people who are out in the streets uh, in Canada and other places, uh, you know, supporting Palestine. This is this is just wrong in this moment. 
And, uh, you know, we, we just want everybody who can to get out and support Israel. And we want you to pray. That's something that, uh, that our organization, our ministry is based on and, and has always been about. We want you to pray. And we are going to give you great opportunities to, to support as well. We've already been in touch with a number of our partners who are setting up funds for victims of war crimes, uh, for helping soldiers get to where they need to get to, and, and some of those things. So we do want to encourage you in that as well. But uh, Zev, thank you so much for taking some time today. I know that you've been busy. I know you were on a call just before you came here with us. And, and we just appreciate getting your perspective. I know that um, you probably know personally people who are serving right now. There's no doubt in my mind that you do. And um, we've already heard of a number of our friends who, who not only have sons and daughters who are serving on the front lines, but have been called up themselves as reservists. And so we are, we are praying with them as well. You know, the one thing I want to say to you is this. I know that you're Jewish and you know that I'm Christian. But we share something. Uh, we pray to the same God. We, we may disagree on, on the Messiah, but we pray to the same God. And uh, I just, we just really believe and are calling out to him on behalf of your nation, on behalf of Israel, and, uh, and on behalf of, of so many innocent people who are suffering right now. And, uh, you know, I also pray for, in I pray for innocence on both sides. I just think it's, it's terrible that uh, this is occurring. And uh, we just are believing that uh, there will be as, as quick as possible a resolution, but also as decisive as possible uh, a resolution. And so thank you so much for taking the yeah. time today. I'll just, I'll just say uh, in, that, in that vein, uh, a friend of mine said, instead of saying uh, that, you know, people should agree to disagree, he says that we should agree to agree. And I think whether you're Jewish yeah. or Christian today, uh, there's far more that, that we can agree upon uh, than, that, that we disagree upon. And, and the enemies of Israel, uh, they hate us in, in large part because of our, our belief in, in the one God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, and yeah. the belief uh, in, in the word of God in the Bible. And, uh, and believe me, uh, these people are no friends of Christians either. And they would do to you what they're doing to us right now if they could. And therefore, the fight that we're fighting right now uh, is not just obviously defending our people and our homeland, uh, but it's, mm. it's uh, defending those who believe in, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as well. Yeah, for sure. Very insightful. And uh, thanks for sharing that today. Uh, God bless you, Zeev. Uh, keep in touch. Let us know how you're, how you're doing and, and how things are going there. We, uh, we do appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you so and much. The next, the next time I'm in Jerusalem, uh, we need to have coffee or lunch or something. Looking forward to it. All right. God bless. God bless. Well, it was great being able to have uh, Zev Ornstein on our podcast today, just to get a uh, perspective from a Jewish Israeli of what's happening and also how we can stand with them. And so I want to give you some uh, practical ways that you can pray. Uh, we're just going to ask for you to do that. Would you intercede on behalf of the nation of Israel today? And uh, I believe we should be praying for uh, for God to protect the soldiers who are serving in the IDF. Uh, to have his hand on them, to cover them with his blood. Uh, we want to include in that prayer sons and daughters of our ministry partners in the land of Israel, many of them who are serving, and also uh, others who have been called up in the reserves, who are older, have served in the past, but now have been called up to serve. Just pray God's hand of protection over each and every one of them. We want to pray for uh, the families of victims, those who have been murdered, many who have been injured, Please pray that God will be with those who are grieving today. Pray for uh, the healing and the recovery of those who have been injured. I want to ask you to pray for that as well. Then thirdly, would you pray for uh, this hostage situation? Uh, as Zeb mentioned, we want to pray that they will not be harmed. We want to pray that uh, the IDF will be able to get them out without having to trade, uh, you know, other murderers or terrorists uh, and, and free them back to, to the Palestinians. We want to be able to see them go in, get them out and, uh, and bring them back to safety. Let's pray for them as well. Uh, let's also pray that this, um, this conflict will be successful in its aim to tear down and destroy the infrastructure of terrorism that exists in Gaza. We, uh, we just don't see a good future without that happening. Now is not the time for negotiation. Now is the time for decisive action. Uh, we want to pray for innocence on both sides, 
that they would be protected, that uh, they would not come to harm. Uh, innocent civilians should not be a part of this kind of conflict. And we are praying to that end as well. And then please, uh, you know, pray. Pray for many of our ministries and partners who are um, going to be helping with the victims of this war, helping through both uh, aid, through housing, through uh, food, through counseling, there are just so many ways that these victims of terror are going to need to be helped through this situation. And we want to pray for our partners who are offering this aid. And while I'm talking about that, would you also consider, um, we know we know that uh, you are so faithful in your giving, and we thank you for those of you who support First Century Foundations. But uh, maybe you've never given before, but I, I just, I, I want to ask you, today as we prepare to respond to the emergency needs that are going to be happening. We've already heard from a couple of our ministries. Uh, one main ministry that we help in Israel, King of Kings, is setting up uh, a an account uh, that can help the victims of war and terror, and uh, we want to be able to uh, to support that. Also, we know that uh, other organizations like Israel Relief Aid and the Joseph Project will be getting aid to the front lines. We are uh, talking about helping uh, those who are in the IDF to get to where they need to get to, transportation for them to get to their bases and so on as they get called up. There are just so many needs that are going to be happening in these next days and weeks. Will you please consider uh, making a gift, a donation to First Century Foundations. We promise you, we will send it to Israel. And uh, I, I don't know how to be any clearer, clearer about that. If you market um, emergency, uh, emergency, war, whatever you want to say to let us know that that's what it's for, we will get it to them. And here's a couple of ways you can do that. You can give on our website, First Century Foundations. Dot com. That's First Century Foundations with an S dot com forward slash donate. And you can give by credit card on our website. You can also e-transfer if you're here in Canada. Uh, the email is donations at firstcenturyfoundations.com. And uh, then lastly, uh, for the rest of this month, at least, you can text to give. And if you text the word give to one 833 Five four zero two eight two two. then you will receive instructions on how to put in your information, your credit card information, and uh, then you can just text a number and that amount will be sent to us directly. And uh, we are just so grateful for your prayers and for your financial support. Listen, this is this is important and we need to do everything we can to uh, to help in this situation. Uh, will you just pray with me right now? Very, uh, I want to pray a brief prayer. Father, thank you today for, um, you know, here in Canada, we're celebrating Thanksgiving right now. And Lord, we are grateful for all of your blessing in our lives. But God, we are in a moment when we need to take what you have blessed us with and we need to bless others right now. God, will you help us? Will you help us to bless Israel with our time and our prayer? Will you help us to bless Israel with our with our finances? Lord, help us to be generous. God, I just pray right now. I pray for so many who are suffering there in that land. I pray for families who have been victimized by terror, who have not only had uh, family members murdered, but had them murdered right in front of them. Uh, God, I pray for the hostages who are uh, being held captive right now. Lord, they must be so terrified. And I pray somehow you will, you will keep them from suffering, keep them from harm, I pray. Cover them with your blood right now in the name of Jesus. I, I pray, O oh God, that you would uh, be with those who are serving in the forces. I pray, God, that you will uh, give them success and, and favor. Lord, for the leaders in Israel, God, give them wisdom, Lord, to know what to do and how to decisively deal with this issue. Lord, I pray, I pray for the, the opinion of Israel in the world, that God, you will help people to see, even those, Lord, who may have, uh, you know, been on uh, another side of this uh, equation. God, help them to see 
the horrific things that are happening and help them to understand the inhumanity of it all and how wrong and how evil it is. I pray, oh God, that that no one would be able to say that there is any excuse for what is happening right now in Israel. God, would you just be with each and every one of our ministry friends and partners, cover them, protect them, their sons and daughters who are serving, cover them, protect them, I pray. And Lord, for many who are being called up, we just, God, I ask for all of this situation, that you will be sovereign, that you will give Israel victory, and that, Lord, uh, there will be a resolution, a decisive and quick resolution to this issue. We we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I thank you for listening today. And I pray, I do pray that uh, that you will uh, do what you can. If, if all you can do is pray, that is huge. We thank you for that. And if you are able to uh, to give a donation and support, we, we promise you we will get it to where it needs to go. And um, thank you for praying for us. We uh, we just we just you know want to be able to to be there, but we know that um, right now that's probably not going to be possible for a while. But but uh, listen, God is bigger than all of this, and uh, so thanks for listening. We appreciate you. Uh, coming back week after week to listen to the Keeping It Israel podcast. We will do our best to do some more regular updates. And please watch our social media as well. There will be some shorter videos there that you can uh, get updated. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and um, uh, at, at FCF Jeff is the Facebook account, Instagram for Century Foundations. Um, and we just encourage you to uh, to follow our social media. Go to YouTube and uh, search for Century Foundations. You'll find our channel there. You can subscribe. And also then you'll get an update every time we post a video. So uh, it's great to be able to have you out there listening. And we know that you uh, are supporting and love and pray, pray for Israel. And, and we just are so thankful for that. God bless you. Have a great day.